When I woke up, I was in an all-white room. I had several tubes coming out of my body, connected to machines. My mom was crying, looking worried as she peered over my hospital bed. According to her, I had been in a car accident while driving and was rushed to the hospital. That's when I remembered. I was delivering something my husband forgot, and suddenly the brakes stopped working. I woke up confused and didn't have any idea why my car malfunctioned. Just then, I got a message from my husband, Leroy, on my phone. I was shocked by the message's content. I'm Molly, a 32-year-old woman. Leroy and I have been married for three years. We live in a condo together, but we don't have any kids yet. Together, we started a corporation, with him handling the CEO duties. The company's been doing great, with rising profits. Our employees work hard and our business relationships are strong. Considering all the struggles we faced initially, we're in a pretty fortunate position now. However, our marriage hasn't been going well, contrary to the company's success. Lately, Leroy and I have hardly been talking. It's been awkward. The trouble started a few months ago, when I found an unfamiliar earring in the car. I don't usually wear flashy accessories, and my earrings are either simple or small. But the earring I found had a large, bright red rose decoration. Plus, there was a faint scent of woman's perfume in the car, different from any I own. Naturally, I confronted him about it, holding up the earring. Hey, I found this earring in the car. Whose is it? Plus, there was this perfume smell I don't recognize. He seemed caught off guard for a moment, then started making excuses. Earring? Oh, I don't remember. Oh, maybe it's from a coworker I drove recently. My bad. I'll make sure to return it. The perfume must be hers too. Don't get the wrong idea, okay? He quickly took the earring from me, and saying he had work left, retreated to his room. His evasive eyes made it clear he was lying. I was sure he was cheating. Since then, our relationship has deteriorated. I just couldn't trust him anymore. He tried to win me over with gifts and flowers, but his insincerity only made me trust him less. I thought if he had someone else, we could just separate. It's okay if his heart lies elsewhere. Living in a tense marriage isn't good for either of us. But whenever I tried discussing divorce, he would find excuses to avoid it. I have work. Or, I'm too tired now. Let's talk later. He'd say, then lock himself in his room. His reluctance wasn't due to lingering affection for me. He feared losing control of the company. We cooperated in work, but at home we barely spoke or saw each other. His refusal to face our issues only cooled my feelings further. To be honest, I was tired of our life together. I considered discussing it with our parents, but I didn't want to make a big deal out of it. Instead, I decided to call my friend Nicole for advice. Nicole, are you free this weekend? Wanna grab some coffee? I have something I need to talk about. That's rare for you to ask for advice. Sure, I'm free. Nicole, my glamorous and outgoing college friend, was the opposite of me in many ways. She had a wide social circle, including various romantic interests. She knew Leroy since she attended our wedding. I hoped she might have some good advice for me, or at least let me vent. 
We met at a stylish cafe. I told her everything. My suspicions of Leroy's infidelity, his attempt to placate me, and his avoidance of divorce talks. She listened quietly, but then she said something unbelievable. Leroy is kind and handsome. There might be women who don't mind that he's married. But even if he's cheating, maybe it's unavoidable? You haven't been valuing him enough, Molly. I couldn't understand why she'd say that. I was the victim, so why was I being blamed? Stunned, I asked her, Are you saying it's my fault? Not exactly, but you're strong-willed and quick to blame. You always insisted on splitting household chores, right? Maybe he got tired of that strictness. I don't always talk about gender equality. I just reminded him that household chores aren't only a woman's job. It's an outdated mindset to think only women should do housework. I don't see it that way. If the husband works hard, supporting him is the wife's role. Constant nagging would wear any man down. No matter what I said, she seemed to side with Leroy. After some discussion, she casually suggested, Why not just give him the company? Leroy's the CEO, so the company is basically his. Get a good sum of money and then leave after the divorce. You can find someone else then. You're beautiful. You can do it. I can't do that. I can't settle for less than alimony and half of our shared assets. Plus, there's the future of the company. Talking to her only increased my frustration. I felt betrayed by my best friend. Was she always this off base? Suggesting I just hand the company over to Leroy? I went home without any resolution. And a few days later, the accident happened. Leroy didn't come home until late that night. Around 10 p.m., he called. I'm really sorry, but I forgot something at the office. Can you bring it to me? I was supposed to send some documents to a new client, but I brought the wrong ones. I rushed out with my car keys. Despite our strained relationship, this was urgent for the company. Like I said before, I don't mix personal feelings with work. The quickest way to the office was over the mountains, so I sped up. Then I realized something was wrong. The brakes weren't working. Panicking, I kept pressing the brakes, but it was useless. The car sped up uncontrollably. I missed a turn and crashed through the guardrail, plummeting off the cliff. That's when I lost consciousness. When I woke up, I was in an all-white room connected to machines with several tubes. Is this a hospital? I turned at a movement and saw my mom looking at me worriedly. When our eyes met, she burst into tears. You're awake, thank goodness. A passing car called an ambulance. They contacted me using the phone number on your note. She told me I was unconscious and limp when brought to the hospital, and she was devastated. When Leroy called, I was so shocked I blurted out that you weren't breathing. That triggered my memory of rushing to Leroy and crashing. I had a mild concussion from the accident, but fortunately no injuries. The cliff wasn't high. The doctor said no major issues were found in the MRI and I could go home in the morning if nothing else happened. It was already late at night. It was too late to deliver Leroy's forgotten items. Despite the accident, I thought I should apologize to the client. Checking my phone, I saw a message from Leroy 
and opened it, freezing in shock. I've tampered with the car. That'll be the end of Molly. Now that she's out of the way, let's get married. His malicious message left me speechless. I had the accident because he sabotaged the car. His claim of forgetting something at the office was probably a lie. He wanted to be with his mistress without giving me alimony or our shared company profits. He tried to kill me to keep everything for himself. He must have sent this message to his mistress, but it was actually sent to me by mistake. I see. I was shaking with anger. I would have agreed to a divorce if he wanted, even considered reducing the alimony. But he chose the worst way to betray me. I couldn't forgive him. I was determined to bring him down. I discussed the plan with my mom. The next day, I waited at home, fully prepared to confront Leroy. He returned around noon, not alone, but with a woman's voice accompanying him. Hearing the woman's voice, I was stunned. It sounded familiar. I never thought it would work out so well. With Molly gone, all the assets are mine. I'll spoil you with luxuries, Nicole. I'm so happy. I never imagined I could be with you. Sorry, Molly, but I'm a better match for you. She'll forgive us in heaven. To my shock, his mistress was Nicole, my best friend. They had betrayed me together. I understood her behavior during our coffee talk. She was covering up her affair with him. Their conversation continued. Tonight's the wake, and tomorrow's the funeral. We have to pretend to cry. If our relationship gets out, everything's ruined. I know. And we can't remarry immediately. It would look suspicious. We'll play the grieving husband and friend, gradually drawn to each other. It's like a drama. So exciting. They chatted cheerfully, unaware I was listening. When they entered the living room, I greeted them with a smile. Welcome home. You two seem happy. When they saw me, they screamed in horror, as if they had seen a ghost. Leroy stumbled backwards and fell, and Nicole collapsed, her legs giving way. In disbelief, my husband stammered. <gasps> How are you still alive? Actually, I had asked my mother to tell him that I had died. That's why he felt safe bringing his mistress Nicole back home. I looked at them with a cold gaze. I never would have guessed Nicole was the other woman. To think I was betrayed by both my husband and my best friend. That was totally unexpected. How long has this been going on? They seemed to come back to their senses at my question. Despite everything, he denied the affair. No, no. It's a misunderstanding. I heard you died and I just invited Nicole over to console her. There's nothing guilty about it. She quickly joined in his defense. Th that's right. I was so sad when I heard you had passed away. He was just comforting me while I cried. The idea of me going after my best friend's husband is ridiculous. Both of them had quite the nerve. They probably never imagined I had heard their conversation before entering the living room. Or maybe they thought they could bluff their way through, assuming there was no evidence. I confronted them with the incriminating phone message he had sent. He muttered, Oh man, I sent it to the wrong person. She glared at him in disbelief. Upon forcing them to talk, it turned out their relationship started right after I introduced him to Nicole. I told them firmly, I'll ask the police to investigate the car. You should be prepared because what you two did is a serious crime. He then begged for mercy. 
Please, anything but that. Please, don't call the police. If you report this, I won't be able to live a normal life anymore. I'll break up with her, and I swear I'll never do anything to harm you again. Do you hear yourself? How can I forgive you? I can't trust you anymore. We're getting a divorce, and I will demand alimony from both of you. She then lunged at me in a fit of rage. Then I'll just have to finish you off right here. If you're gone, I can be the president's wife. At that moment, a loud voice shouted, Stop! That's enough! My parents and relatives emerged from the back room and restrained Nicole. Leroy's in-laws surrounded him, showering him with insults. I had anticipated they might try to harm me, so I had called our families to the house. One of my relatives had recorded the entire conversation and had already called the police. Hearing that the police had been called, Nicole's face grew even paler. She began crying and begging me for help. I can't be arrested. Please, Molly, forgive me. I only had an affair with Leroy for a bit of excitement. It wasn't serious. Please, uh, let's forget the police. We're best friends, aren't we? I reached my limit with her selfish remarks. F you. Who do you think wrecked your best friend's home? To say something like that now? Have you no shame? But, I mean, enough. I don't want to hear any more from a criminal. I'm cutting ties with you, and I will never forgive either of you. Stay away from me, forever. Leroy and Nicole were then taken away by the police, crying. Later, they were found guilty of attempting to take my life. Their motive was to avoid property division and to monopolize the company's profits. They had become criminals out of greed, and I had no sympathy for them. Afterward, I hired a lawyer and finalized my divorce from Leroy. The alimony for the affair was paid by both Nicole and Leroy's families. They were to repay it after they were released from prison, even if it meant working to do so. Eventually, I took over as the president of the company. The employees did not pry into my personal life and simply offered their sympathy. Later, I returned to a carefree single life. From now on, I plan to focus on my work as president and live my life positively.